Hey, Kevin Francis, astrophotographer here. I'm sure you're wondering why in the world I've got my entire telescope in pieces. I'll tell you, round stars. It's all about the round stars. Yeah, I'm still trying to get round stars out of my entry-level uh, Orion ST80 telescope. There's some things you can learn from uh, that, or that I've learned from this. Um, so let me start and talk about tilt. It's all about tilt. There's tilt in the image train and it causes the stars to look egg-shaped. And for me, the egg-shaped stars can consistently show up in just about every image I produce. Um, and I haven't been able to figure out why. I even bought a field flattener thinking that would clean things up for me, although it, it did uh, around the edges, but they're still the same egg shape. And part of that I thought was, okay, well maybe my polar alignment is the problem. But that really isn't it. With different polar alignments, I continue to have the same orientation of egg shaped stars. What I did in taking this apart is I learned that there's this lovely little plastic um, I guess stabilizer I'll call it and it sits at the top of not physically it sits right actually inside here at the top and so when you have your focus right and you get your focus and you want to lock it down you're pushing down on this little tiny black piece here right and that is holding the draw tube this in place so that you can maintain your focus well Seeing how long this thing is, okay, when you're pushing down with your, your lock screw, you're pushing down on one end of it. And what that is, is it's causing a moment of inertia and allows the draw tube, when sitting into, and I'll, I'll simulate, when it sits in uh, inside of the housing there, and you're pushing down this end, it's doing a little bit of that, all right? And I'm exaggerating here. And so that means the light's coming in and working its way all the way down to your center. And guess what? It's not straight coming into your sensor. And therefore, no matter what you do, you're gonna have some form of oval egg-shaped looking stars. I, di I discovered that this particular telescope, the Orion SC-80, and I don't know if it's true for all entry-level telescopes of this uh, style, of this type, but there are actually two holes here, one and two, and they contain set screws. So you can actually utilize your Allen key and adjust those set screws, which will take this plastic piece that's here and push it further and further down. And what that does is it allows the draw tube to sit right here on these two white pieces, which are basically guides for the draw tube, but it gives it centering and it keeps it level. Again, we still have the problem of that moment of inertia. When you tighten it down, it's gonna push on one end. So. Um, but those set screws um, also present another issue, which is you can actually just get to the point where you're driving the set screws all the way through this plastic, and that doesn't help you much either, right? Because your goal is to push this piece of plastic as far down as possible on top of this draw tube and get it to sit all the way down here at the bottom. Okay, so that being said, well, that would be the solution in a very short video, but I'm Kevin Francis, astrophotographer. I 3D print stuff. So I went and designed a new piece for that and it's got an angle on it, right? So it's thicker on one side than it is on the other. And so the, the thicker side is actually meant to take the front end of this draw tube and keep it flat or keep it like this. So that when I tighten down on the other end, I'm always gonna remain in the level position in, with respect to, to the lens. 25 minute print, took a little bit of a while to, to draw that up. And so I've got that done. Let's take a look and see what kind of results I've got in comparison to what I've already shown you of some oval egg shaped stars.
Here it is, put back together. Get it installed. And I wait for the sun to go down. Certainly looking forward to what I can achieve with this new change I just made. getting late sun's going down got everything set up and I'm really happy with this this is not moving up nor down side to side and I'm gonna have to get it focused tonight since I've uh, jibbled and moved everything around but I'm really happy with how solid this feels and it still moves with my oops I got to unlock it and I can still move it okay and focus it so this is really, really nice. Um, now, there is you know, about a one millimeter gap from the top here down to the, the tube. Um, so I'm not sure if that's gonna show us some shift in the photo, but I'm, I'm looking to see that the stars are gonna be nice and round um, with this. So tonight's target is gonna be the Tulip Nebula, something I've never tried before, but it will still show whether or not I've made an improvement. So. Um, and I'm doing that because the moon is behind me if um, you can't see that and I'm when this this target is far enough away from the moon that I can utilize my filter successfully and really see what's going on with this so stay tuned okay YouTube um, I went back to capturing more data uh, just to verify that I've completely fixed my tilt issue and yes I have but I found a new one and let me show you I've got stars that are egg-shaped all over, right? It's, it's, it's a drift, right? There's, there's something going on, most likely on the RA motor, right? Because that's really the only thing that's moving. And it's, so it's either in the worm gear and the mount or the motor itself. I'm not sure, but it's not consistent because I can go from stars that look like this to stars that look like this. And this is what confirms to me that I've actually fixed my problem and that even that uh, little one millimeter gap, which I think is causing some egg shaping way out here in the corner, because um, again, this is not perfectly lined up, at least on the camera side of things, but I have a little bit of egg shaping way out here in the corner, but it's mostly round pretty much everywhere else, right? So that field flattener is able to do its job and is able to do its job all over the field of view outside of where I have that one millimeter gap um, from the top to bottom of the draw tube. So, okay, I fixed the problem, but I still have a problem with drift. I may have to buy a mount in order to get rid of or be, be more consistent with this. I'm not really sure um, what I gotta do on this Orion mount with the dual motor drivers on it that now I've got round stars even if it is just one or two subs within a three sub uh, span so um, I'm, I'm happy with that that's good now I just got another problem I got to go solve and with that I'm going to work on it so I may end up just buying a new mount um, which I may do anyway or um, spend a little bit of time you know trying to dig into this worm gear slash um, RA motor driver potential issue uh, on the Orion side. So anyway, thanks for watching. It's Kevin Francis Asher, photographer. And remember, the sky is only the limit when your mind is unwilling to fly. So go beyond. Thanks for watching.